Hello and welcome to the CPU Galaxy channel. Yeah, on my last trip to a scrapyard, I was lucky enough to find this nice MFM hard disk drive made by magnetic peripherals. But unfortunately, this drive is not working at all. And in this video, I would like to do some failure analysis, we will do some soldering, uh, some tricky repairings, and at the end of the video, of course, a low level format and checking out if this nice piece of hardware is working proper. CPU yeah, so then let's take a closer look at this device made by magnetic peripherals. It's actually a 43 megabyte MFM drive in very good cosmetic condition. So this is a five and a quarter inch half height disk drive. And here we have the two connectors for the data cables and the standard 512 volt power connector. On the front we have this typical nice black cover with the red LED indicator. First of all, I connect the drive to a power supply to check if the motor is spinning up. Yeah, but here no power on the drive and the power supply goes into the fail-safe mode due to a short on the output. You can see this here that the fan of the power supply is just uh, shortly moving and then stopping immediately. Yeah, so we definitely have to search here for a short somewhere. And on the PCB underneath, we have just a lot of SMD parts, but nothing obvious which could create this short. In most of these kind of failures, it's an old capacitor which needs to get replaced. Yeah, then let's go ahead with dissembling. First I'm removing the four screws which hold the front cover on its place. And here we can see the thin ribbon cable which leads to the heads inside. On the other side we can see some connectors too between the drive and the PCB. One for the motor and the other one I guess for the linear actuator which is moving the heads. I always try to disconnect these ribbon cables before removing the PCB to avoid any damages afterwards. And those thin ones get very quickly broken if you put too much force on them. Four screws are holding the PCB on its place and after unscrewing them it's easy to remove the PCB after disconnecting another ribbon connector which was hidden deeper inside. Now we have all nicely separated and after a first visual inspection I cannot see any suspicious parts which are usually the cause for a short. But here on the uh, thin cables which leads to the linear actuator of the head, we can see a strange looking area. The thin plastic is somehow degenerated and it seems that two copper lines inside are touching each other. To be sure where the short really is, I'm going to connect the PCB to the power supply and check if the PSU is still shutting down. Yeah, then let's switch it on and yeah, so the PCB is running, the power supply is not switching off, so we can see here the fan is nicely spinning and we have the red indicator LED on the PCB lighting up. So the short is for sure on this part of the hard disk drive and this we have to investigate on now. Yeah, and this ribbon cable looks really really strange. It looks uh, somehow really melted and not disintegrated. So maybe we had some high current through these uh, copper lines and therefore the, the plastic was melting. So I expect that maybe on the other small PCB in front there might be also something damaged which caused this damage here on this ribbon cable. Um, let's measure with the multimeter and yeah, so we have definitely here a short Let's check on the other side, yeah, also a short. So uh, we have to find also a solution to remove the short inside this ribbon cable and checking the cause for this damage on the other PCB. Yeah, then let's uh, remove the screws here to get this PCB off so and here we have it so I think that this is the power regulation unit for the motor and the linear actuator 
and in between the metal and the PCB we can see here a ceramic substrate with some uh, power semiconductors on it. Yeah, this is for sure the power control unit. Uh, and here we have already two capacitors which might be the cause for our short here, but we are going to uh, measure it also the some diodes here around. Yeah, first I'm going to check the diodes. So these are just common 1N4007 diodes. They should have a voltage drop of 500 millivolts and they seem to be pretty okay. The last one, let's check it. Yes, it's also fine. So then let's change on the multimeter to measure the capacitor so the small one seems to be also okay we have a high resistance here and the bigger one yeah so definitely this is the short so this capacitor is fully shorted and let's check again yeah definitely zero ohm so this cap we have to remove for sure so this is a 22 uh, microfarad electrolytic capacitor and first I'm going to remove uh, one side and I will measure again to have not the pole PCB circuitry influenced in my measurement to be sure that the capacitor is really the one who is creating the short. So one side removed from the PCB and we have still the short on the capacitor. So this is definitely the cause for all our troubles here. So then let's dissolve it completely and yeah, so 22 microfarads and I decided to dissolve also the small one and replace both of them to avoid any further repairing. Yeah, these are not the original capacitors, but still they don't look that bad inside the PCB and I'm quite happy with the result. Yeah, to remove the short inside the ribbon cable, I think I'm going to cut uh, one line on both sides to get rid of the short and connect those two pins with an external cable. This should be a convenient solution and would fix for sure the problem. And then let's put some plastic in between the disk drive and the, the cable and with a carpet knife I'm cutting two times on each side to remove a little bit of the copper from inside. So this looks already very good and let's go ahead to the other side gently cutting that we don't uh, destroy something uh, next to the wire and yeah so we have nicely cut at both sides and we have to connect this with a wire later on. So now checking again with the multimeter. So the short is gone. So we have successfully opened this wire. Yeah, after cutting a little bit more, I could remove the whole remaining copper wiring from inside. So now we can be sure that there is no short uh, coming up again in future. On these very thin film uh, ribbon cables you need to take care with the soldering iron to perform your soldering quickly otherwise you will burn the plastic. Once done we got here a very satisfying result and I'm pretty sure that the hard disk is going to work now, ready to reassemble. Also discovered now is that the uh, resistor network for the termination is missing so I'm going to put here a replacement in 
you need this termination always if you just use one drive on a controller or the last drive in a row needs to have this resistor termination. And now it's time to set up the system to test our drive. I'm using a 386SX16 mainboard. The advantage of this mainboard is that it has included software, diagnostic software in the BIOS, which makes the life much easier to set up a MFM drive. The components I'm going to use is this uh, Trident 9000 video card with 512K video memory. Then we need a I.O. controller for our floppy drive. And of course, a Western Digital MFM controller, the WD-1006V. So actually this controller I'm using for all my MFM drives. It's supporting most of the drives and I had until now no issues with this controller. Yeah, time to switch on. Let's see if it's powering up. Yes, it's powering up. We have a LED in front, lightning, so very nice. Yeah, the heads are also initializing. Very nice. Let's switch it off. Yeah, so, and this clanging and knocking you heard uh, while switching off is the auto bark function of this drive. So let me show you uh, on an example how this is working. I have here an old defective drive to show you this auto park feature. Drives with linear actuators are using a spring to pull the heads to the parking position. The heads are floating on the airstream of the rotating discs and usually not touching the surface. Only in the landing zone, which is not used for data, the heads can go down and rest there while the drive is switched off. Powered on, the actuator is always working against the spring. Drives with stepper motor for the heads won't work by that way and therefore you have to park them always with a software command to the landing zone to avoid any damages on the surface. Yeah, and now back to our system. I love this sound of the old drives. Gives me a, a real vintage feeling. Now we are going to enter the, the BIOS to set there the right values for the hard drive. So over here we have to change it to 47 user type. So we have 1024 cylinders, 5 heads, then we have landing zone of 1024 or so and 17 sectors. This gives us in total 43 megabytes of memory. And now we change to the diagnostic software. This software tool, uh, which is part of the BIOS, gives us a lot of possibilities to check the MFM drive, make some seek test, performance test, random verifying test, and of course also a low level format, which we need uh, to pair the controller with the drive. Here I'm going to perform a quick seek test um, that I can see that we have access to the hard disk drive. Yes, so the seek test is running just normal, the heads are moving. Um, this shows me that we can regularly access to the disk. So then let's go ahead to perform the low level format. As I mentioned already, the hard disk drive is paired with the controller. This means you cannot change just to another controller without performing a low level format. And therefore we are going to do this here now. We just have to enter here again some values. Interleaf I'm taking three, but the interleaf uh, factor we can change later on with another software to get the best performance of the drive. So then let's start the formatting. So the low level format takes about eight minutes. It is quickly done. And we are now ready to boot up in DOS with our floppy drive. Yeah, after booting DOS, we can start now FDisk to create a primary DOS partition. 
Of course we choose the maximum size of 42 megabytes and after rebooting again we are ready to do a DOS formatting. So format C should be also quickly done. So the formatting takes also only some minutes and it's finished without any error. So let's give it a name also, CPU Galaxy. Nice. So we can see in total 42.45 megabytes available without any defects. We still have to sys the C drive and then we can check if our computer here is willing to boot off our repaired MFM drive. So then let's restart and yes, DOS is booting off the C drive immediately, very nice. Then let's go ahead to start another nice tool for maintaining MFM drives. It's called Spinrite 2 and this tool is very powerful in terms of checking the whole media, setting the right interleaf and marking or correcting bad sectors. All this without losing any data. So the most detailed option takes days. I will choose the normal option which will take anyhow the rest of the night. Yeah, so now it's in the morning and everything is finished now and the whole disk surface is done without any bad sectors. So this is actually very nice. Imagine a 34 years old uh, hard disk drive repaired now without any damaged areas. Very, very nice. So then let's exit the program and check again with uh, check disk and you can see here also no defect areas. So with Norton system information we can perform a nice hard disk speed test. Let's check how good our disk is now performing. Yeah, and we can see here above 400 kilobytes uh, transfer per second and an average seek time of 27 milliseconds and this is actually pretty fast for an old MFM drive. So let's check out also check it. Um, this is always my second option for doing some performance tests. Here it's uh, for some reason showing um, almost 300 kilobytes of, of transfer rate, but the average access time is the same. Uh, I think that uh, the transfer rate is depending on the blocks of reading and I think system information and check disk, uh, check it is using a different way of testing. So all in all we have here a very nice uh, repaired vintage hard disk drive which is ready for use in any pre 386 systems. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to say something, please comment below. And if you don't want to miss any further content, please subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit the bell button. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.